Hello and welcome into this new series of machine learning in Python. In today's video, we are going to create a simple application where you're going to learn how to visualize any company's stock price using Dash framework. Usually in data visualization, we use matplotlib library, but in this video, I will be using Dash framework. Dash is a productive Python framework for building web applications using only Python, no HTML, no CSS or JavaScript. Dash is built on top of plotly.js, which is a standalone JavaScript data visualization library. And it also powers Python module called plotly.py. It's also built on top of React, which is the most famous JS framework for the front end and Flask. And I will leave the link to the project documentation in the description section below. You will need Flask installed on your local machine. So if you don't have it, you can install it via pip install Flask. And if you doubt whether you have it or not, then go to your terminal and type pip freeze, like so. To display all the installed modules and libraries, we will need also to install a couple of third party libraries, pandas underscore data reader and dash. After we have installed pandas underscore data reader and dash, now we will need to import these libraries into our program. So the first thing that I'm going to import is pandas underscore data reader. dot data and we'll give it an alias we'll call it web and pandas underscore data reader contains tools for collecting data from various remote sources the second library that we're going to import is dash and as we said dash is a python framework for building web apps using python only with no html css or javascript Also, we'll have something called dash core components and the dash core components library generates higher level components like controls and graphs, which is very important in our program. And we'll give it an alias, we'll call it DCC. Next, we will need to import dash HTML components and the dash HTML components library provides classes for all of the HTML tags and the keyword arguments. And we'll give it an alias. We'll call it simply HTML. Next, we will import the input and output from the dash dependencies. And the last built-in library that we will need is the date time module, and it supplies classes for manipulating dates and times. Now let me explain something very important about dash apps. The dash apps are composed of two parts. The first part is the layout of the app and it describes what the application looks like. And the second part describes the interactivity of the application with the user. Now let's go ahead and start by creating the layout. So let me type here first, the layout. Now let's go ahead and create our app, which will be equal to dash module dot dash class. Next, I want to give our app a title. So we'll say app dot title. We'll give it the title of stock visualization. Next, I want to give the app a layout using the HTML, which is the dash HTML components library dot the special method called div, which is basically the div inside the HTML page. And we will have children 
and these children will be equal to a list and inside that list we'll have different components so the first thing that we will have is html.h1 a header we will say stock visualization dashboard so we'll give the page a header called stock visualization dashboard next i want h4 header saying please enter the stock name then i want the input so the dcc which is the dash core components dot input and this is basically the box where you're going to type the name of the company stock that you're interested in so we'll give it an id and the id is a unique identifier for the input so we'll call it input value will be equal to empty string which means empty ready for you to type in and the type will be equal to text the last thing we need to do is we need to display the result or display the graph so this is html.dev again with an id and we will call that id output dash graph like so so we are done with the layout it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward next thing we need to do is we need to create the interactivity so let me put another comment here now we need to write a decorator dot callback function by writing this decorator we are telling dash to call this function callback whenever the value of the input component, which will be the text box, whenever this input changes in order to update the children of the output component on the page. So whenever you will type the name of the company, the graph will change accordingly. So the callback method has two things inside it, the output and the input. And the output and the input both, they have two attributes, the component ID and the component property. So let's go ahead and type that. The first thing that we need to write here is the output with O capital. And if you will hover over output, you will see that it has component ID and component property. And this is the output of a callback. And the component ID is simply what we have set here, the output graph. So the output has first parameter of component ID, which will be equal to output graph. And the second parameter is component property, which will be equal to children, which is basically all of that. Next, we have the input, and it's in a form of a list. And the input also has component ID, which will be equal to input, which is right here. And component property. which is equal value, which is empty string. Okay, great. Now we want to create a function which updates the value of the output depending on what stock name you type in. We will call that function update value. And it has one parameter only, which is the input data, which is the name of the company that you're going to type in. And now we want to read the stock prices from January the 1st, 2010 up until today's date. So we will have two variables. The first, we'll call it start, will be equal to date time dot date time. And inside here, we will have the year, which is 2010, then the month, which is January, than the first day of the year. 
the next variable we'll call it end also will be equal to daytime dot daytime dot now so we will have the starting date and the ending date cool now we want to create data frame and we want to read the stock data from Yahoo's finance API from start to end in order to do that we will create another variable we'll call it data frame or DF for short and this will be equal to web which is the pandas data reader dot method data reader and inside here the R is capital and inside here we will pass in the input data the API which is Yahoo start and end the last thing that we need to do is we want to return the graph so we will come here and we'll say return the DCC or the dash core components dot graph with a G capital and inside the graph method we'll have different parameters the ID we'll call it just demo the figure which will be equal to a dictionary and this dictionary will have a set of key value pairs so the first key is data and it has um, a value of a list inside that list we will have another dictionary with the x-axis which will be set to the data frame dot the index the y-axis which will be set to the data frame dot close then we want the type of the graph to be line then I want the name to be whatever name you enter which will be the ticker so input data next we want to have the layout so the layout will be set to a dictionary with a title of whatever the input data is okay we are done with our program the last thing that we need to do is we need to run the server so we'll say if name equal to main app dot run server and we will set the debug mode to true so we don't have to restart the server every time we update the script itself so this is it this is our program to visualize the stock price from 2010 up until today for any company you are interested in just be careful that d i made a typo d is a small d and components here is without an e all right let's open our terminal and let's run the server okay great as you can see that the application is running on this IP 127.0.0.1 and on that port 8050 and there you go this is our application and if you will take a look above here you will find my react developer tools which is activated this proves that indeed dash is built on the top of react plus flask and plotly.js all right let's go ahead and type the name of our company for example let's go ahead and type Microsoft so it has a ticker of MSFT well this is amazing um, you can see that the price in January 2010 was $30 and it was subjected to different ups and downs as usual and Today, the stock price of Microsoft is equal to $204. Let's check Apple, AAPL, and you can check all these on Google. I mean the ticker names. Fascinating. This was $7 in January 2010, and today, the price is $115.
Let's check Tesla, for example. Wow, this is superb. Tesla started with $3 probably in July. And today's stock price is equal to $450. almost This is fantastic. So you can see this is our stock visualization dashboard using the Dash framework, which is very useful for data visualization. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Hello and welcome to another video of machine learning in Python. In this episode, we will see how we can visualize stock data of different companies in a specific time span. We will do that using an interactive visualization library called Bokeh. Bokeh is working with modern browsers and it renders its plots using HTML and JavaScript. Bokeh can be used to visualize stock market data. Visualize is done using the plotting module and we will utilize the sample stock datasets given to us by Bokeh. By the way, Bokeh is a Japanese word which means the aesthetic quality of the blur produced in out-of-focus parts of an image. We will be using the sample stock datasets given to us by Bokeh. In order to import the library, we need to install it via pip install Bokeh as shown on the screen. Then let's go ahead and import the library Bokeh and we want from bokeh.sampledata.stocks we want to import the ticker symbols or the stock symbols. So Apple has a ticker of double APL, then Facebook, Google and Microsoft. Next, we want from bokeh.plotting, we want to import figure, output file, and show. The last thing we need to do is we need to import NumPy. We'll give it an alias of NP. Now, let's open our Python shell and let's import bokeh. Good. And let's go ahead and say bokeh.sample data dot download to download the data set. All right, perfect. Now we have successfully downloaded all the sample data. Let's exit the shell and let's get back to our code. The next thing we want to do is we want to instantiate um, a figure object. So we will call that graph and this will be equal to figure so we want to display our graph in X and Y axis. So X axis type, and this will be equal to date time. So the X axis is the horizontal one and Y axis is the vertical one. So on the horizontal axis or the X axis, we will have the date time. And on the Y axis will be the prices in dollars. We'll say stock closing price. Then we want to name the X axis. So we said that the X axis will be the date or the years. So we'll say graph dot X axis dot axis label. And the label will be, let's say date. And likewise, we will say the Y axis with the axis label of say price in US dollars. All right, so we have the labels for the X and Y axis. Now what we want to do is we want to plot the line graph for Apple. So let me add a comment here. We'll say plotting the line graph for Apple. To do that is very simple. We will need the x-axis coordinates, the y-axis coordinates, the color, and the legend label. Then we will add all that inside our line function. So x-axis coordinates will be equal to the numpy module dot array. And inside the array, our stock symbol, 
which is AAPL with the index of date. Then I want my data type. So I will say D type is equal to numpy dot date time 64. And the data type is called datetime64 because datetime is already taken by the datetime library included in Python. Then we want the y axis coordinates to be equal to apple. Inside here, we want the index of the adjusted close, like that. Next, we said that we want the color, which will be equal to blue, and the legend label. Then we will take the graph dot line in order to display the line and we will enter the following arguments. So the X axis coordinates, the Y axis coordinates. We want the color to be equal to the color defined above. Likewise for the legend label to be equal to the legend label defined above. All right. Perfect. So we have uh, the plotting for uh, Apple is all set. So we'll need to take that, copy it and paste it three times. Or if you're inside Visual Studio Code, go ahead and hit Alt Shift down one, two, three, three times. OK, just let us give some space. So the second company that we will want is Facebook. Then we want Google and Microsoft. All right. And we will change very simply um, the ticker symbols. So FB and here will be also FB. Color will give it, let's say black. Here is FB as well. So for Google, the ticker is G O O G. All right, give it um, orange and G O G. I will just change um, the black. We'll put here blue, blue for Facebook, and black for Apple. So this is all set. The last company we have is Microsoft, so it's MSFT, um, the stock symbol, and MSFT as well. Microsoft will give it, uh, hmm, I don't know, maybe yellow, and MSFT. All right, perfect. And let's relocate the legend table. So relocate the legend table to the top left side of the screen. And to do this, we'll say graph.legend.location, dot legend.location, and will be equal to top underscore left. All right, so we'll put it on the top left in order to avoid any vision distortion that might happen. The last thing we need to do is we need to display the model. So we'll use the show function and inside here we will insert our graph. All right, perfect. So we're pretty much done. So let's open our terminal. So once we will run our program, we should have a file.html that will be opened directly. And if you will not name that file explicitly here, uh, it will take the name of your Python file. Let's say Python main.py because you didn't explicitly call your HTML file, it automatically took the name of your Python um, file. If you want to name your file, you can just simply say that you want your output file. So let's say for instance, data.html or stocks.html. All right, but before we run our file, let me just delete main.html and I'll say python main.py. It has named your HTML file stocks.html as you have specified explicitly here in the file. 
and let's check it out. So this is the visualization for um, the stocks from the year 2000 to 2012. This was the data sample given by Bokeh Library, the peaks and the bottoms for each stock price for Apple, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. Start from $0 to $800. So this is it. This is how to visualize stock prices for Apple, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft using the Bokeh Library. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Hello and welcome to a new video for machine learning in Python. In today's video, we're going to create a rainfall prediction model. And rainfall prediction is the application of science and technology to predict the amount of rainfall over a certain region. And it's very important to determine exactly the rainfall for effective use of water resources and pre-planning of water structures. So today we are going to use linear regression to predict the amount of rainfall. And linear regression can tell us how many inches of rainfall we can expect. The data set that we're going to use is a public weather data set from Austin, Texas, and it's available on Kaggle website. And I will leave the link in the description below. Let's first create our folder. We'll call it rainfall. prediction. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use any text editor you like. Okay, and let me bring the data set here, which is a CSV file actually. Uh, it's called Austin underscore weather. And we need to do something called data cleaning here. And most of the data is very messy and unstructured. And honestly, they rarely come ready to use. And data set, whether large or small, they always come with a variety of issues like invalid fields, missing and additional values, and so on. So in order to bring it to workable or structured form, we need to clean our data and make it ready to use. All right, as you can see here. This is all raw data. It's not structured and we need to work on that. And in our case, the data has some days where some factors weren't recorded. And the rainfall in centimeters uh, was marked as T, as you can see here. And our algorithm requires numbers, so we can't work with alphabets popping up in our data. Therefore, we need to clean the data before applying it to our model. So let's go ahead and do that. Create a file called main.py. So this is the first thing that we will need to do is to clean our data set. So step one is we need to import the libraries. We're going to work with pandas and numpy. Then we want to read the data in a pandas data frame. And we will need also to drop the unnecessary columns in the data. We have columns such as date, such as events, columns such as sea level pressure high inches and low inches. We don't need all of that. So we will need to delete it or to drop these columns from the data set. I will override the data variable here. The elements inside the list are case sensitive, so be careful. Events with E capital. And let me actually copy the others. And as we mentioned before, some data here contains the T and we need to replace all occurrences of T with zero so that we can use the data in our model. So again, I will override data variable to replace the letter T with zero. The same thing with some dashes, which indicates zero or none or null. And this means that data is not available and we need to replace that with zero as well. So let's do that. 
we will replace the dash by zero. And last step here is to save the data in a CSV file, which will be the final version or the clean version. We will call it Austin final. Okay, cool. So let's run that. Perfect. So we have created Austin final file without the T's, without the dashes and without um, the date and other things that we have dropped out of the data set. All right, let's carry on. So basically we don't need this code anymore, but I will not delete it. I'll just put it in a doc string like that. So in order to continue, we will need other libraries. So we will import the science kit learn or SK learn. And all these modules or libraries, you will need to pip install them. They don't come uh, pre-installed in Python. They're actually third party libraries. So you will need to pip install them. And we want from sklearn dot linear underscore model. We want to import the linear regression. And we will import actually from the matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot as plt. All right, so these are the libraries that we are going to need. Okay, so now we're going to work with the Austin final file. We don't need the Austin weather anymore. Uh, this is the raw data, this is the clean data. The first thing we need to do is we need to read the clean data. So I will create another variable called data, uh, pandas.readcsv, and the name of the file. Now we're going to create the features or x values of the data, and these columns are used to train the model, and the precipitation column will serve as the label. So let's create x. This last column, we'll need to drop it. And we need the output or the label. For that, we'll create a Y variable. And we want to reshape it into a 2D vector. So we'll override the Y. to minus one and one. Now let's consider a random day in the data set and we shall plot a graph and we can observe this day. So let's have an index. So day index is equal to 798. And days in this case will be I for I in range the y dot size, the property, which is the size of the label or the output. And let's initialize a linear regression classifier. So we will call it CLF. And this will be equal to the linear regression. And here we're going to train the classifier with the output data. So CLF dot fit x and y. Okay, and I want to give a sample input to test our model. So this is a 2D vector that contains values for each column in the data or in the data set. So let's have a variable called imp, short for input, and this will be equal to the numpy.array. And what I'm going to insert here is a sample input, a random sample input. And let's override that by reshaping the input. And let's print the output. So print. Let's actually try that. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. So the precipitation in inches for the input is 1.33. Okay, now let's go ahead and work on our graph. So we need to plot a graph of the precipitation levels versus the total number of days. And one day, which I'm intended to put it in red color, uh, will be tracked. So let's print the precipitation. And let's have the plot. So PLT scatter. And we want the days here. We want the output with a green color. I put just one day uh, in red color. Then I will give it a title. Precipitation level. And we want um, the X and Y label. So the X or the horizontal axis will be called days and the vertical axis or the Y label will be called precipitation in inches. Okay, perfect. So let's show that. Let's open the terminal and run the file one more time. And there it is. You can see the precipitation level, the days from 0 to 1200, and the precipitation in inches. And this is only for Austin, Texas. And this is one day that we have chosen. So what we have done here is we have plotted a graph of the precipitation levels versus the total number of days. Okay, perfect. Let's carry on. So what I want to do next is I want to plot a graph with a few features against the precipitation or the rainfall to observe the trends. And we are going to use some of the features here. So um, we're going to filter uh, like temp average F or Fahrenheit. As you know, in the United States, um, the temperature is measured by Fahrenheit. So we're going to filter some of this. So we will take the temperature average. We're going to take the dew point average F, this one, uh, the sea level pressure average inches. You can do the testing on other features by filtering them as you like. So let's create a variable. I will call it x underscore f or features. And I will print a statement saying that precipitation versus selected attributes graph. So what I want to do now is I want to loop over these features. So I will say for i in range x underscore f dot columns because they are in columns and each has a specific size and we want to plot and actually a subplot and this is actually the number of rows and here is the number of columns and the index all right next I want to scatter And I want the values in the columns with a sub i to 100 and give it a green color. Next, I want the one day, which will be in red color, day index. And let's give that a title as well. And the title here will be the X features dot each value in each column. And be careful here the X is capital. Okay, and finally, let's show the plot. Okay, so here, let's put a comment. Here we wanted to plot a graph of precipitation levels versus number of days. And below here, I 
and we're doing that to observe the different trends. All right, so let's give that a try. So it's the same. Um, the precipitation in inches is 1.33 inch and our graph is the same and once we shut that we got the second graph which is this one right here with the different features like temperature average in Fahrenheit, dew point average Fahrenheit, the humidity average percent, the sea level pressure average inches in inches visibility average in miles and the wind average meter per hour okay so this was how to predict the rainfall in austin texas in the usa using machine learning in python i hope you liked the video thank you for watching and i will see you in the next videos Hello and welcome to a new video from machine learning in Python. In this video, we are going to see how we can automate trading using a module called Quandle. Using Python speeds up the trading process and therefore it's also called automated trading or quantitative trading. So one thing I wanted to make clear that exploring the data at hand is called data analysis. So the first thing that we are going to do is to learn how to extract data using the Quandle API. And let me show you the website. So quandleapi.com, the world's most powerful data lives on Quandle, the premier source for financial, economic, and alternative data sets, including analysts from the world's top hedge funds, asset managers, and investment banks. And what we want to do is we want to get an API key. So quandle.com forward slash tools forward slash API. Okay, so uh, get millions of financial and economic data sets from hundreds of publishers via single free API. And um, you're free to read everything here if you are working on data set, uh, financial data sets, and just to be precise. So how to get an API? Well, uh, before we do that, I would like just to say that uh, this is supported by languages like R, Python, Excel, and I think Ruby as well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we can log in if you already sign up, but just to sign up, uh, you'll get your name, uh, your first name, your last name, um, personal account. Then you will follow that. Then it's very simple. You will receive an email. You will verify that this is your email. Then your account will be activated and then you can log in. Once you're logged in, you will have your API key here. And this is what we are going to need in our code. So let me just copy uh, this API key here. And um, before we go to the code, let's just pip install Quandle. Okay, perfect. Just one thing that I wanted to point out um, for Quandle, that we are going to use historical data or previous data. And using previous data is going to be the main key to our back testing strategy. Um, because usually the trends in the stock market tend to repeat themselves over time. So if we are going to take um, data sets of the stock prices, for example, for Amazon, Apple, Google, then we can see the different fluctuations over the years. And we can plan our strategy based on that historical data whether to buy, to sell, and all this uh, depends on the historical data or the analysis of this data. And this is what we are going to do now. Okay, so we have our condol done. We will need also pandas, so uh, make sure you got that installed. We will also need matplotlib, so make sure that also is installed. Okay, so let me close um, the command prompt and create a folder. Open that with Visual Studio Code, but you can use any text editor you like. So the first thing uh, to do is we need to import our libraries. So I will import pandas, quandle. Oh, and I forgot we need also numpy. So make sure that numpy is also installed. 
Okay, now about that API key. So I'm going to create a Quandle object here. So we'll use uh, the Quandle package and paste that as a string. So what we are going to do is we are going to extract the price of, um, let's say, Apple, uh, the Apple stocks from January the 1st, 2010 till January the 1st, 2020. And the ticker for that is double APL, right? So Apple data. EOD, uh, EOD means uh, end of day order, which is actually an order given by uh, the trader or the investor for the securities that's only open till the end of the day, whether to buy, to sell, and different um, financial decisions given by the trader. So this is called EOD or end of day forward slash and as we said the ticker is AAPL uh, for Apple company we need a start date and end date okay and I will create just uh, declare a variable called Apple and this will be equal to the Apple data dot the head because we want to display the first five rows of the data and let's print that okay so okay cool so we get the date open high low close then the volume of trading the dividend the stock splits and adjusted open high low close and adjusted volume so what we have we have the open and the close uh, which is the opening and closing price of the stock we get high and low, which is the highest and lowest prices for the stock that the stock has reached actually during um, each particular day. Okay. And we get adjusted high, uh, open, low, and so on. And this is the impact of present dividend distribution or stock split or any other corporate action on the historical data. That's why it's adjusted. Okay, perfect. So let's carry on. Uh, next thing that I want to do is I want to calculate the returns. Okay, so what is the returns? Um, basically, it's the profit or loss incurred by the stock after the trader or the investor has used long or short positions. So let's declare a variable. We'll call it close price. And this will be equal to the Apple data. And I want to choose the adjusted closing price. So what I want to do now is I want to print the returns as a fractional change. So I will declare another variable. I will call it daily return. And daily return will be equal to the closing price. Dot a method called PCT underscore change. And this is just the percentage change between the current and the prior price. Um, if we will print daily return. So let me comment this line out, open a new terminal. Okay. Um, sometimes we will have NAN. So we don't need that. We want to substitute that by zeros. Okay. So um, let me just delete this line. What I want to do now is I want to fill the NA. So daily return dot fill NA and I will fill um, the NA or non available by zeros. And a second argument which is in place and I want to set it to true. So now if we will print um, the daily return. So I'm quite sure now that all NA or NAN um, have uh, disappeared and substituted by the zero. So what I want to do next is I want to assign the adjusted closing price to adjusted prices. Let me declare um, another variable, adjusted price. This will be equal to the Apple data. Uh, basically it's the same line 13 right here. So adjusted close like that 
And usually the analyst um, tests for uh, the statistical measures over a sliding time period. And this is called moving period calculation. So let's see how the rolling mean can be calculated over a 50 day window. Here I want to calculate the moving average. And moving averages actually help smooth out any data anomalies or spikes. So I will show you in a minute the graph and you will understand what I mean. They provide you with a smoother curve for the company's results. Uh, it's better representation basically. Okay, so let me declare another variable called MEV or moving average and I will use the adjusted price dot rolling and uh, with a window of 50 days dot the mean method. And this is uh, a pandas method basically. Um, this provides the rolling window calculations. And let's go ahead and print um, the MAV or uh, the moving average. And we want the last 10 days, not the whole thing. So let's try that out. Save it first. So these are the prices uh, using the moving average. Okay, this is the daily return uh, as a fraction change, like we have set here, right? And these are the last 10 days uh, in the data set. Okay, good. So what I want to do now is I want the adjusted price dot plot and And let's give that a go, but let me just first um, comment this line out. Okay, we got uh, the same result and our graph here. So this is from 2014 till 2017, and this is the price. I started below $15 and moving up. And you can see the spikes, uh, the fluctuations up and down, the several circumstances that can affect uh, any kind of security, especially the stocks. Okay, good. So let's check out the moving average. So you can see now that um, the curve is smoother than the adjusted price. And it's representing the same trend. Okay, um, just uh, up and down, but without the spikes. Okay, and let me just put them uh, both next to each other. So, um, basically they are the same, as I said. But this one using the moving average and this one is without the moving average. And this is for Apple and we can change the ticker. Uh, we can change the symbol. So from Apple, let's say Microsoft, which is MSFT. Um, but we'll need to change all that. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, you know that it's Microsoft. So if you will take a look. You will find the numbers uh, that are going to be different. There you go, 78 till 80, and the graph as well is different. So this is really cool that you can use Quandl Data Hub to retrieve any data that you want for any company or major corporation to show its financial movement for any time period that you want. So this actually can help you and your company doing some huge informed financial decisions based on um, these data. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Hey dudes, what's going on? Hope you're all doing great. Let's create a simple cryptocurrency dashboard today that would display the updated value for several crypto such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and so on. 
And before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button and to subscribe if you're not already. This video is a response to your request, guys, as last week we have worked with Streamlit to display different stock prices with a chart and a summary. You have requested to do the same thing on crypto, and that's what we're going to be building today. Just before we get started in the tutorial, I would like to show you this website, MinorityCrypto.com. Below here, you will find very interesting articles. There was one article that I loved, this one, Bringing Blockchain to Traditional Finance. Above here, you will find the different or the updated prices for all of the cryptocurrencies that you might think of. Okay. And um, not long ago, I started uh, investing in Bitcoin Cash. In my opinion, it's one of the most stable cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, let's check it out. So you'll find that the last price for the Bitcoin Cash is 575.68. The change is a favorable one, 3.36%. Uh, green which means up and here you can find that uh, today we have gained $20.93 okay plus 3.78 percent all right so I really recommend this website and you can check it every day um, there is always something new in the world of cryptocurrency and you'll find above here this bar is just moving showing you the latest movements ethereum uh, gained 3.95 percent uh, increase like favorable change binance coin like all of them almost are favorable changes very good let's check out very quickly the bitcoin fifty-eight thousand. Uh, let's take a look all right so it was it's definitely better uh than yesterday you see that it's live update even each second almost there is a change for the price 1176.86 it has gained 2.07 it's 2.10 already yeah bitcoin is a bit crazy very volatile and that's why i have invested in bitcoin cash it's more or less stable uh also i would like to share with you guys this post here on my tech blog dev.to what is crypto and how does it work and if you have just uh, i don't know four or five minutes um, you can read my insights about cryptocurrency i don't take one currency specifically but i speak about um, the whole concept how cryptocurrency works the blockchain the proof of work and all of that all right so yeah and you are more than welcome to follow me on the dev.to blog okay i write um, every week about different different topics really here you can see coroutine versus subroutine um, also sometimes i do some promotion to my youtube videos here um, machine learning streamlit this is the last week right uh, but you can find others like linux file system go language so you're welcome to follow me on dev.to and I recommend that you can create an account as well and start writing because in order to write something, you need to study it first. And this is a great way to um, teach yourself about a specific subject. One way is by creating YouTube videos, other way by writing to your audience. You can write tutorials, you can write your um, personal insights. What do you think about uh, specific technology or programming language or framework or whatever and as I said it's a great way to teach yourself because in order to write about something you will need to read a lot about it all right so that's it guys let's go ahead and start writing some code okay so I have a folder here called streamlit.crypto and I'm going to open it with visual studio code you can use any uh, text editor that you like all right, and the first thing that I want to do is to open the terminal. You can go up here, open a new terminal or control shift and tell they this is a shortcut. And let's go ahead and activate um, the virtual environment. I'm using PPNV. Uh, if you don't have it, you can install it by pip install PPNV and then PPNV shell in order to activate your virtual environment. Once the virtual environment is activated, we will need to also pip env install, we will need the streamlet, and we will need Yahoo Finance, because we're going to grab all the data or all the financial data regarding the cryptocurrencies from the Yahoo Finance. So pipnv install streamlet and Y Finance.
it perfect now we have streamlit and wi finance installed in order to test the streamlit version and to make sure that it's properly installed you can type streamlit version and you will get the streamlit version 1.2.0 this is the latest okay great now let's go ahead and start coding um, i'm going to create main .py file python let's just close that let's shut that let's actually kill it um, you know what it's actually better to open um, to open the streamlit page in order to write the code on the left side of the of the screen and see the changes on the right side of the screen on uh, the web page itself so we'll say streamlit run main.py or whatever the name of your file is okay it just doesn't matter hit enter okay so we have a white page we're going to write on that white page right now we just close that okay the first thing that we need to do is to import different packages so i want yahoo finance as yf i want streamlit as st I want also the pill or the Python image library because we're going to display different images for different currencies um, just for to give it more visual flair, nothing more. So from pill, we're going to import image. And actually the image is located on a website or on a URL. That's why I will need to import URL lib.request in order to open these URLs. So from URL lib.request, I will import URL open. Let me just make it a bit smaller. Okay, let's just uh, click on always run in order to um, reflect all the changes directly you don't have to uh, click on rerun every time you change something in the code we're going to display in our dashboard the data for different cryptos or cryptocurrencies bitcoin ethereum ripple and bitcoin cash my favorite okay it's not a marketing campaign for bitcoin cash but i'm just telling you that i really like it and it's more stable than others so um this is the ticker, if you like, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum is like that, Ripple. These are variables, right? We are storing the value of that ticker in that variable. Um, there is called XRP hyphen USD. And the last Bitcoin cash, it has the ticker of BCH hyphen USD. defining ticker variables and here we want to have an access to the data from the yahoo finance using the ticker method let's say access data from yahoo finance again i'm going to create different variables the data so we want the bitcoin data using yahoo finance dot ticker the t capitalized don't uh don't miss it and we're going to pass inside the Bitcoin. Okay, and we need four of them. So uh, we'll say Ethereum, Ethereum or ETH only data. Here we will take the XRP and here we will take the BCH. And we're going to change all of them. So ripple and uh, the final one is bitcoin cash all right next step we want to take is to fetch the price history from yahoo finance so here we have only access to the data and now we want to fetch these data okay we will use the history method and we're going again to create four different variables so uh, bth his or history and here i want the bts data so we're going to use uh, our bitcoin data and we're going to use with it a method called history and history takes a period so the period could be one month 
Uh, it could be one day, right? Could be three months. We're going here to set it to the maximum. Period is set to max. Let me just minimize this. And again, we need three more. So we'll call this uh, Ethereum. Here is XRP. And here is the BCH. XRP data. And the last one is BCH data. Um, let's have, first of all, let's go above here. Let's have some titles and subtitles. To do that in Streamlit is very easy. We can use different methods such as title, header, subheader, right, and so on. So we can uh, have a title, we can say cryptocurrency daily prices. All right, I didn't misspell that. Let's have also a header. You can see here main dashboard. Control S to save. And let's have a subheader. You can add more crypto in code. Let's also have data frame, not only to display the graph, but we will have a table with the data frame. The high, low, open, close, the volume, and all of that. So here we can say fetching or fetch um, crypto data frame. Or uh, it's not data frame, it's data for the data frame. Let's again have four different variables. The first is the Bitcoin going to take the Yahoo Finance module or library dot download. And the first argument in download method is the ticker. So the ticker is stored in the Bitcoin variable. So we're going to insert that first and we want starting date. And uh, the format for the dates are year, month and day and between them hyphens, not dots. So 2021 dash 11, let's make it for yesterday. Today is 19th, yesterday is 18th and the same for the ending. So um, the start of the day and the end of the day. What was the price at the start and what was the price at the end? So I need three more. All right, so now we have all the data, but we should display them. We should render them on the web page. Okay, to do that, we're going to take Bitcoin first as the first example, and we're going just to copy the same thing for the other three. So let's go ahead and start with the Bitcoin first. So this is the Bitcoin. Oops, Bitcoin. Okay, so um, the streamlit module dot write method, and here we will write Bitcoin in uh, dollars. Next, I want to add an icon for the Bitcoin. So let me create image BTC variable. And this will take the image library dot open. And we want to open the URL. So URL open method. And here I'm going to just paste the link. It's from coinmarketcap.com. All right. And let's render it using the image uh, method to render pictures or images to the web page. I'm going to take our variable image BTC, control S to save, and immediately you will find it appearing on the screen. Next, we want to have the table for the data frame. So here to display image and here to display data frame st dot a method called table and there are different methods uh, in the streamlit website you can check them out in order to display uh, data frame in different ways okay but this is my favorite just using table method and control s now we should see um, our table there you go so this is the highest price uh, yesterday 
$60,823. The lowest was 58 and it closed on 60 again, but it lost um, like $500. And the volume of trade is that number, this huge number. Maybe I'm mistaken, but the Bitcoin is the number one cryptocurrency in terms of trade. Okay, so let's go ahead now and display a line chart, uh, or it could be a bar chart if you want. Here, display a chart. So again, we'll take the streamlit library dot bar underscore chart, and we will pass inside the history or the Bitcoin BTC history. Uh, how did I write it actually? BT h no btc oops right btc um, history dot we want to display the closing price okay so we'll save that this error should disappear now and there you go okay so we have very nice title with the image or the, the icon a data frame and a chart. Let's just take a closer look here. Okay, so on Monday, yesterday, which was, oh, this is even for today. Let's take uh, yesterday, which was 56,000, the closing price. And today it has closed on 57,000. Okay, so 56, 57. Before yesterday it was 60,000. Okay, so the Bitcoin is playing uh, between the 55 or we can say 50 and 60,000. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other four. So let me just copy that in Visual Studio Code. If you want to copy below um, a code block or a line even, you can hit together, you can select everything, then Alt, Shift and down arrow key again and again. I'm going to change it to Ethereum and let's also change the variable. Okay, so this is for Ethereum. Okay, let's scroll down. Perfect. Okay, um, the closing price for, yes, because I wrote 18, it brings 17 uh, end of the day. So actually, let's, um, let's change all the 18s to 19s. So immediately here, it will be changed to 18s. Okay, it brings you the previous day. All right, let's change that to Ripple. And here is image XRP and XRP history. See, it's exactly the same code, but um, the variables names changes. And you see it's relatively stable. It started with 1.09 and finished with 1.04. Okay, let's check out for the last one, my favorite, Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash. All right. Let's copy again the link to the icon or the image. Let's just get below here. All right. And this is called BCH and what else? Well, we need to change basically only CH here, BCH and BCH. All right, and this is basically it. If you want to create a simple dashboard to display whatever crypto that you're interested in, you can create this as a beginner project, right? To use Streamlit. And you can see that we haven't used any HTML, CSS, or JavaScript in order to create this awesome dashboard.
You can even deploy your web application. Just click on that hamburger menu and you can actually deploy this app. We'll click on deploy this app. Unable to deploy, could not find a remote repository hosted on GitHub. So you will need first to create a community account on Streamlit. And let me just show you very quickly. So go to streamlit.io. You can sign in, all right? Continue with GitHub. You will need access your GitHub account. All right, and that's it. You just click here on new app and you will need to have your uh, your GitHub URL for your for the um, for the application. So you will push the code to your GitHub repo and you will copy the link. You will paste it here and you will deploy. All right. So that's a good place to wrap it up. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Beck Brace and a new machine learning tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to forecast sales using machine learning and reinforcement learning. To train machine learning models, we're going to use linear regression, random forest regressor, and XGBoost regressor algorithms. I'm going also to leave the link for the data set in the description section below so you can download it and work with me. And I'm not going to use VS Code, instead I'm going to use Google Collab. So you can start coding directly without uh, pipnv or pip install any packages. You got everything uh, pre-installed to you. So go ahead to your browser. I'm using Google uh, Chrome here and just type Google Collab. Welcome to Collaboratory Google Research. And you will have your introductory or the homepage. So here you have the recent files that I've opened, some examples, your Google Drive, GitHub, and upload if you want to upload any uh, Jupyter notebook here to work with. Okay, so let's actually, we can go directly and uh, click new notebook, and you can do the same from file, um, new notebook. So it's the same. So here just simple as that. And here you can do the same thing, file, new notebook. So you can uh, rename your file here. I'm going to call it sales underscore forecast, hit enter. And as I told you, you can just start importing stuff. So import OS. So this is a code line, right? This is a Python code line. You can run cell, you can control enter if you like shortcuts. So this is only will execute that code line. All right, perfect. So this green sign here means that everything went okay and the cell executed. You can add a new code by just hitting plus code or you can do the same here. You can also add a text if you want, but not to confuse with a comment because normally you can add a comment like you would do in Python um, editor, right? You can do like that. This is a comment. The second thing that I want to show you is to add a new code block or we can just simply hit enter and continue importing as you like uh, but just for clarity i'm going to do this like here and i'm going to import pandas as pd how awesome is that it just it's auto completing and everything is pre-installed um, let's also import numpy Perfect. Also, I need matplotlib. Matplotlib.py um, pyplot as plt. Right. Perfect. Next, I want the xgboost. Um, not import, but from the xgboost, I want to import the xgb regressor. And now I want the science kit learn or the SK learn and everything again is pre-installed. So you don't have to worry about um, the updates or anything. You just type your code and Google Collab takes care of it. Now I want the random forest regressor. Also, I want um, 
I want the linear model, the linear regression. So it's from the sklearn dot linear model. I want to import the linear uh, the linear regression. Also, I want the min max scalar. So from sklearn sklearn dot pre processing, I want to import the min max scalar. Now I want our um, evaluation metrics, the um, mean absolute error, mean squared error and the R2 score. All right, so for that I need from the sklearn package dot metrics to import the mean absolute error, the mean squared error and the R2 underscore score. All right, great. Um, also from the TensorFlow models, the sequential, the dense and LSTM, but there are different um, packages. One is for the, from the models and one from the layers. So from tensorflow.keras.models, I want to import the sequential. And instead of the models here, got the layers and here I need the dense and the LSTM. All right, sweet. Um, tensorflow, not uh, with an E, but oops, okay, don't like that. What did I do? Okay, uh, tensor, tensor. All right, you can hit control S to save the file, by the way. Right, so now this file is saved on your Google Drive. So the next time you will enter your Google Collab, you can see here my, it just um, logged in with my profile because I, I was already logged in, but you're probably uh, going to uh, be asked to log in. Also, let's do like that from tensorflow.keras.callbacks now because I need the the early stoppings, uh, the early stopping, sorry, and the mo model checkpoint. So I need the callbacks. and the early stopping. I love machine learning, by the way. I love machine learning, data science. I'm fascinated with uh, robots, with AI and all of that. So if you would seem a little bit excited, don't be surprised. All right, great. Uh, now uh, let's go ahead and import that file because we'll need to read from that file. This file actually will have the data for different stores. Let me actually show you. Let me uh, let me actually show you in VS Code first. So you can see here that we have uh, how many records? 91,000. Yeah, there you go. 913,000 records. Okay. All of that actually is what is the data for different stores. So the sales number for that item at that store on that specific date. All right. And this is basically data for the years from 2013 till 2018. So for that time span, for these five years, we're going to work with this data in our machine learning tutorial. So I'm actually going to upload that file to my Google Collab. So we're going here, section, okay, make like that. Oops, no, nope. uh, here. Yeah. So here you got some uh, sample data the test and the train for the California housing. So whatever, we're going to um, actually upload our file and you will get this message reminder, uploaded files will get deleted when this runtime is recycled. Well, fair enough. Uh, we don't want our files to be uploaded uh, on the cloud there. So every time you will open your notebook, you will need to upload that file. Okay, a little bit tedious, but um, yeah, it is what it is. So now here, as I showed you, you can run uh, just by one line. And here, if you will execute that or run the cell, it will run this cell. But if you want to run everything together, you can go to runtime and run all. It will start from the top until the last uh, code line. Okay, so 
let's actually do that you can if you like um, shortcuts like i do you can hit ctrl f9 so you see uh, executed the first block uh, first cell and then the second cell all right perfect no errors there no issues perfect let's close this for the moment now let's go ahead and um, start reading from that train csv file so i'm going to add a new code cell here and let me create a new uh, variable declare a new variable pandas dot read csv and the name of the file is train dot csv all right and then store underscore sales dot i want the first um uh, the first rows, the first lines. So let's run that. Okay, perfect, because it has read actually from our train.csv file, right? So we got here the date, the store, the item, the sales, like I showed you in the VS Code, exactly the same thing, from zero to nine, so the first 10 lines. Okay, fantastic. All right, perfect, let's now add a piece of text just to tell you what I'm going to do next. What I want to do next is to check for null values. We don't want any null values in the data set. So here, check um, for null values in the data set. And directly we can add a code. So you can see this is the text, the explanation of the code. Okay, so we can take the store underscore sales and can get the info to understand what we have. So great, we have a column. So the name of the column, date, store, item, sales. The number, this is auto-generated. We have 913,000 rows. And the count here, we have non-null. So we have everything is non-null, perfect. And the data type, so we have the date, which is object, integer 64, which is uh, the store, the item sales, because they, they are naturally integers. Okay, great. But since we will deal with the overall sale of the items in all of the stores, we will need to disregard the columns representing the store ID and the item ID. So we'll need to drop those two items or those two lines, right? Let's do that. Let's add a text. Dropping store and item columns. Okay, so let's overwrite the sales. This is equal to store underscore sales dot drop. Um, and we want to drop the store and the item. Oops. And here the axis is equal to one. Great, let's actually check out what we have so far after dropping. So store underscore sales dot info. So now you can see that the item and the store have been dropped. We have now the date and the sales. Okay, fantastic. Now we will need to work a little bit on the date. The date column in the data set is of object data type, and that's not correct. We will need to convert it to daytime data type so we can use it for further calculations in our tutorial. All right, so let's do that. So here I'm going to say converting um, date to uh, from object data type to daytime data type data type all right so let's add that code we will take the store underscore sales with the uh, index of date and the pandas to date time and then again store underscore sales with the date just for consistency i'm going to make it also single quotes all right great so just to see what we have store sales info just to see is if the data type yeah indeed the data type 
has been changed from object to date time 64. Right, fantastic. Okay, so rather than predicting the sales on the very next day, we want to train the models to predict the sales in the next month. So we need to convert our date to a period of a month. And then we're going to sum or add the number of items sold in each month. So let's add that text. So converting, uh, converting date to a month period and then sum the number of items in each month. All right, so let's add that code. So that's really very um, simple. So what we will do is we will take the store sales variable with the sub um, item of date dot to period to period m which stands for month and then i'm going to declare a new variable called monthly underscore sales and this is equal to store underscore sales dot going to group by i'm going to group by date and i'm going to sum then I'm going to reset the index. All right, control S to save. Let's run that. All right, great. Now let's actually um, get the timestamp and get the first 10 columns like we did before. So we're going to convert the resulting date to timestamp data type. Okay, let's add that piece of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take again the monthly sales with the sub date equal to again monthly sales um, with the date dot dt to timestamp to timestamp all right and that's it basically now it has been converted to timestamp um, let's actually let's actually add another line here and let's get the head uh, the 10 heads of the monthly sales just as a sample right so head 10 perfect great so we got the date here and we got the sales. Fantastic. Let's now visualize the monthly sales of the items. So visualization. Let me add a code here. So we're going to uh, plot that with the figure, fig size. I always write fig size, which sounds German. <laughs> okay, 15 and five and oops and now we're going to plot going to take the monthly sales i hope this is better for you guys to see monthly sales sub date and monthly sales sub sales for the um for the axis for the, the the x and y axis plot like that all right so the sales is the x axis the date is the y axis the vertical and the horizontal so let's give that some labels plot dot x label so the x label is going to be date here so plot oops plots x label and this is date and the y label is going to be sales all right perfect and also we can give a title plot dot title and here i can say monthly customer sales all right and let's show that finally plot dot show 
and let's run that code let's see what we'll have all right perfect so we have the dates here from 2013 to 2018 and the sales on the vertical axis right so yeah great so you can see here uh, in may we have 795 and it has increased to 855 so from uh, we are talking in 2013 so in may it continues to grow to grow until it reaches the peak between august and september between august and september actually yeah this was the peak because after the 689,000 pieces it started to fall again to hit 656,000 pieces. So since data is showing an increasing trend over time, as you can see here, well, for the most part, we need to make this data stationary to improve the training phase of the learning models. So we can simply call the difference on the sales columns to make our sales data stationary. So let's do that. Let's actually call the difference to make the sale the sales data oops stationary and let's get the monthly sales with the sales underscore diff this is going to be equal to the monthly sales with the sub sales dot diff like that and then the monthly sales being overridden here monthly underscore sales dot drop the not available or not uh, drop na right the non available here and we're going to return the 10 first columns uh, monthly sales dot head 10 right let's run that all right so this is here the first so the first of february so this is the whole month of january right first of february which means 31st of january so the whole month of january so this is the starting point here and i reckon that the sales difference is the difference between um, january 2013 and december 2012 there's no other explanation for sales difference because this is the first month right so uh, let's actually calculate uh, just to double check that as I'm an accountant I love always to use the calculator so let's go ahead and actually calculate the difference between um, January because this is January right and this is February so let's go ahead and do that um, six one seven three eight two minus four five nine four one seven right we got one hundred fifty seven thousand nine hundred sixty five um pieces right this is the difference this is the increase in sales basically right from jan and so on from jan to february february march and so on and again do not be confused the first of february means the 31st of uh, january that's the the month and the whole month of january I hope this makes sense to you guys let's uh, go ahead and visualize that so plot dot figure i'm going to take the fig size again with dimensions of 15 and 5. okay let's run that code and boom sales difference i didn't give it um let's actually give it a title um plot dot title so we're going to call that monthly customer sales difference titles are always important difference titles are always important if you're going to do some uh, presentation to your boss or your colleagues or whatever so this is the monthly customer so sales difference all right this is exactly what we have explained here above 
All right, so we need to train our models now to predict the sale of the items in the next month. And we'll do that by looking at the sale of items in a specific number of previous month. So we need to prepare a supervised data set to feed it into the machine learning model. So for this tutorial, we're going to keep the look back number of month to be 12. So for example, previous 12 month sale data will be used to predict the sales in the successive 12 month. So first of all, we need to drop off the date and sale here. Why? Because we'll be only dealing with stationary sale data. And we're going to use that to train the machine learning model uh, as well as the reinforcement learning model later. Let's actually write dropping off sales and date. Let's add that code. So our uh, so what we want to create now is the supervised data, right? So supervised underscore data is equal to the monthly sales dot drop and we're going to drop as we said date and the sales and again access equals to one all right let's run that so now we will need to prepare the supervised data now we actually have dropped the date and sales right but we didn't prepare it yet so we'll prepare it in a matter that um, the 12 month sale or the, the previous 12 month sale uh, will be will act as the input features and then the um, next 12 month sale will be used as the output for our supervised learning models so let's actually write a comment here guys for you to understand what's going on so preparing the supervised super vised data so i'm going to iterate over um, 1 to 13 right exclusive which means that from 0 to 12 for 12 month so i'm going to use the for loop here for i in range 1 to 13 i want the column name to be equal to month underscore just to concatenate with the iterator here and uh, the supervised data or the sub um, call name or column name is equal to the supervised supervised oops super supervised data sub sales underscore diff or difference dot shift the iterator and then outside the for loop code block here I'm going to um, just redefine the supervised data or overwrite it supervised data one more time dot drop n a dot reset uh, reset index and drop is set to true okay and then we'll get the head again supervised data dot head 10 uh something is oops supervised data right great that's a lot of data <laughs> okay so as you can see here from month uh, from january through to December we have the sales differences and uh, we've got our 10 rows because we have um, defined that we want the first 10 rows here so you got the sales difference for each store based on each month the next step is the coolest step for me and that is to split the data into training and test data so the train and test data so here we're going to split the data into uh, into train and test okay so the first variable train I zoom back again train data is equal to supervised underscore data minus 12 
and here is the opposite actually right and that's the test so this is for the um, previous 12 month and this is for the coming 12 month so we're going to print here train data shape and let's concatenate that with the train data not shape oops uh, yep that's correct and here the test all right great just uh, capitalize the t all right perfect so the next step i'm going to take is uh, to use the min max scaler and this is basically to scale the feature values to restrict them to a range of minus one and one and i'm going to show you why so let's actually uh, create the scaler min max scaler and the feature range here is equal to minus one and one i believe that's correct yep okay and we're going to fit now the uh, train the train data right we're going to fit it in the scalar so scalar dot fit and train underscore data okay and then after the train underscore data I'm going to transform scalar dot transform train data and also the test data oops control s to save that let's run this great so in the supervised data frame the first column always corresponds to the output and the remaining columns act as the input features so uh, let's go ahead and uh, declare the x underscore train and the y underscore train and this is equal to train underscore data column comma one column and train data here is column comma zero column one same goes exactly with the test data So remember always that in the X or the Y train and test, the first column will represent always the output. Okay, so the Y underscore train, Y underscore train dot travel. Same goes for the test. and then let's go ahead and print everything so x underscore train the shape here is x train dot shape one two three okay the y underscore train the x underscore test and the y oops let's make it like that y underscore test okay and that looks good to me so let's run that and there we go we have the first column here is the output and the second columns or whatever comes after is the input this is the shape of the x and y train and test so everything we've been doing so far is just data pre-processing and in our last step of data pre-processing we're going to make a prediction data frame in order to merge the predicted sale price of all the trained algorithms so let me 
actually add a text here so um, or create or make make prediction um, data frame to merge the predicted sale prices of all trained algorithms so let's add that code here and let's get the sales dates and this is actually the sales or the monthly uh, monthly underscore sales dates and uh, nope not yet so uh, minus 12 right dot reset uh, reset index drop equal to true and then the predict underscore data frame is equal to this is a new variable we're going to declare and that's uh, the sales dates right so we're going to uh, get the pandas dot data frame and we will pass inside as an argument our sales dates let's run that code so far so good but we also need to extract the actual monthly sale values of the last 13 months um, since they correspond to test data set and basically these values will later be used to find the predicted sale prices from the the output or the predicted output of the sales differences or the monthly sales differences so let's go ahead and add that here so the actual sales so we have the actual and the uh, forecast that were predicted sales so the actual sales is equal to monthly underscore sales and that is okay and as we said we want the last 13 month so minus 13 column dot to list method all right um, if you want to print that just to show you okay see these are the sales for the last 13 month all right good so everything we have done here is just uh, the core part of the pre-processing we didn't do anything we didn't do the forecast yet so that's where the fun part will begin we will begin with the forecast sales using linear regression coming up next welcome back so linear regression basically tries to find a linear relationship between a set of input variables and the output variable so weights attached with the input variables are updated during the training phase so that the predicted output aligns well with the designed output and to train the linear regression we can simply call it using the science kit or the scikit learn package and we will pass the training data and by the way we can use the predict function of the linear regression model to get the predicted outputs okay so let's go ahead and add our text so what we're going actually to do here is to create the linear uh, linear regression model and also the linear regression prediction or the um or rather um, the predicted outputs right so the predicted predicted output so let's go ahead and do that let's initialize the linear regression so i'm going to call it uh, lr underscore model right and this is equal to the linear regression okay great next i want to fit the x and y train inside the linear regression model so lr underscore model dot fit x underscore train and y underscore train and finally i want to uh, declare a variable i will call it the linear regression prediction and i'm going to pass the x test inside the uh, predict function or method so lr underscore predict or pre maybe and I will take the LR model model dot 
predict method and here inside I want to pass the x underscore test. All right, let's run that. Remember when we used the min max scalar here, uh, where was it here, right? We actually need to transform the predicted values to their original scale. So we'll call for a function called inverse underscore transform. So let's do that quickly. So I'm going to take the linear regression model lr predict lr pre and i'm going to reshape for minus one and one and let's declare a new variable i will call it lr underscore pre underscore test underscore set and then i'm going to take the numpy package and use the concatenate method to concatenate what exactly two things the linear regression prediction here and the x test we're going to concatenate both of them so the linear uh, linear regression pre and the x underscore test um what did i do not it's not correct it's inside an array inside the list okay and the axis is equal to one and then I will uh, take the same LR pre test set and this I will use the um, the inverse inverse transform method and I'm going to pass here the linear regression prediction so LR underscore pre and I'm going to pass here the linear regression prediction test set And let's run that. We have got an error. So um, where is the error? Axis one is out of bounds for array and dimension one. Oh, you know what? Um, I just mistyped that. Not the uh, not the model. I need the prediction, right? The LR pre that this one here. Now I think it will be okay. All right, perfect. So sorry for that. That's so let's um, recap very quickly. We have created a linear regression prediction and we have reshaped it. Right. And then we have created a test set for that um, linear regression prediction model. And we use the NumPy package and we have concatenated the prediction and the X test. And then I've overwritten that I've used the scalar here and that min max scalar as we have used above for the pre-processing to inverse transform the uh, linear progression test set so what we have done actually we have created a um, a test set matrix this is a matrix actually right this is a uh, set matrix and this matrix what it contains it contains basically the x test so this is the the, the test or um, the input features of the test data and also it contains the predicted output instead of the real output okay so uh, okay let's write it contains the um, mm, the input features of the test data and also the predicted output so once we have actually restored the scale of the predicted output for the sale difference uh, now we need to calculate the predicted sale values um, so let's actually let's first of all let's create a list i'll call it result list so once we've calculated that predicted sales values from the difference values we are going to append it to that result list here all right so let's go ahead and do that so let's loop over so for i in range let's change it for index in range from zero and then the length of the linear regression pre 
test set. So we're going to append. So result underscore list dot append the linear regression. That's a lot of things to say. The linear regression pre underscore test underscore set. And that I want the the iterator or the, the index in this case and the first index of the iterator. Okay. Plus the actual underscore sales and that also with the iterator. So outside of the for loop here, I'm going to create a new or declare a new variable. I'm going to call it the linear regression prediction series. So LR pre series. And this is actually the series of the result list of that list that we have created here. We have appended everything. So um, the pandas dot series and here the result list and we'll give it the name of um, linear prediction and also the data frame. So predict data frame. So the, uh, the predict data frame actually is going to merge the linear regression prediction series, this one, where the left index is true and the right index is also true. So this is equal to predict underscore data frame and we're going to take the linear regression pre uh, series this one here I'm going to pass it inside and I'm going to set the lift the left index to true and the right index is also to true uh, oh I did not merge. So since we have calculated the predicted sale values of the test data, we can now evaluate various metrics for uh, the um, LR linear regression model. And we're going to compare the predicted sale values with the actual sale values. And that's the core of what we're doing today. We want to compare between the actual and the predicted sale values to see the deviations, to see the differences and to learn from that. And this is a very good way to show your boss or the, the board or whatever, um, just in order to uh, take this or take any deviations in considerations to um, just to avoid it in the future, right? For your sales plans. Okay, let's go ahead now and add that piece of code. So I'm going to use here the mean squared error, the mean absolute error and the R2 score. Okay, which we have import them here. Don't worry. Here from the SK learn metrics. This is for the evaluation. Now let's go ahead and create three different or declare three different variables. Um, again, for the mean squared error, the mean absolute error and the R2 score. So I'm going to say L R underscore. Um, <laughs> we call what mean squared error. So M S E mean square. All right. So that seems to be a good variable name. So numpy dot square root, and we're going to pass the mean squared error uh, function. And inside here, the predict uh, predict data frame. Uh, first of all, uh, let me actually comment this for the moment. And let's actually print the um, the data frame, the predict data frame, um, in order to avoid any key errors in the future. So we have here data and linear prediction. This is the name, the exact name that we have given it. This exact name, you should be very careful. This exact name should be used while you are doing your evaluation, right? If you will use any other name, it will not work. Uh, just to show you. So let's go ahead and get back here. Predict data frame. 
So that predict data frame here, which has the date and the linear prediction, right? But if you're going to use any other name, so let's say, for example, LR, right? Pen is going to complain, actually, it's going to yell at you. And it's going to give you a very nasty um, uh, error, right? So let's go ahead and continue our monthly sales with the sales here and minus 12 for the um, previous 12 month. So let's just for the sake of demonstration, let's print linear regression MSE mean squared error. All right, and concatenate that with the LR underscore MSE. We're going to see now a very ugly error message. It's a key error message. There you go. So um, key R, LR, it's not defined. They, they don't know that LR, which I've just um, uh, deliberately written it just to show you that it's going to give you this key error. So if in any um, machine learning or project you're working on and have faced that key error, you should understand that inside the data frame, you should only enter the index, which is defined in that data frame. All right. But if I'm going to write what we have uh, set here, exactly linear prediction, and let's run that one more time, we should get a good um, good result right so this is the first evaluation so the linear regression with the mse i want also with the mean absolute error and r2 all right this we didn't create yet so let's just delete that and let's go ahead here and create them so i'm going to call it lr underscore mae and then i'm going to pass directly mean absolute error and the mean absolute error inside I'm going to take the predict data frame again with that linear prediction good with one single quote and monthly sales with the index of sales and again with the previous 12 month All right, and finally, let's get the LR underscore R2. And this is the R2 score. And again, the predict data frame with the um, linear regression, uh, linear prediction, again, with one single quote. Don't know why it continues to do that, right? Monthly sales, basically, it's the same thing, right? Monthly sales, sales, and minus 12. Uh, minus 12 column all right and here lr underscore mae lr uh, underscore r2 all right let's save that let's run that one more time and we have got a lot of stuff here why uh why do that uh you know what let's actually cut the whole code let's delete that and let's run everything from the top all right good now let's add again paste that run that again all right perfect so now we have got the linear regression r2 equal to 0 0.99 for the r2 score for the mean absolute error, we got this number. For the mean squared error, we got this number. Now, the model looks pretty fine in predicting the sale values. So let's visualize the predictions against the actual sales, right? Okay, so here. Okay right let's add the code so let's go ahead and get the figure um, figure fig size is equal to 15 and 5 and then we're going to plot that plot 
the um, monthly sales with the dates. So this is for um, so this is for the actual sales. predicted sales so plot dot plt dot plot and here the predict underscore data frame again with the date all right and let's give it a title plot dot title And give some labels, plot dot x label. The date is um, just a big convention. The x label is on the horizontal axis and the sales on the vertical on the y axis. And it's visually appealing if we'll add some legends. So plot dot legend. And we will say here, first of all, the original or actual sales and uh, predicted sales. All right, looks good. Let's show that on the screen. And let's run. Oh, we have an error. Uh, plot the plot print. Okay, what's the error? Key error. Oh, again, um, because, okay, okay. That's the, the error that I was telling you. Now I've fallen again in that key error, right? Should be linear prediction. So it would be whatever you will, um, you will type inside that predict DF right here. Okay, so we're going to substitute the sales with the linear prediction. Save that run again and we have an error y plot dot legend actual sales predicted sales why is it complaining type oh it's so uh, silly okay should be like that all right now we're good so as you can see here, we have the actual sales with the blue line, with the blue color line here, the predicted sales only from 2017 till 2018. So, okay, so you can see here that from 2017 uh, till 2018, actually, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty okay. I mean, if the blue line represents the actual sales, just hold on, let's make it like that. If the blue line here represents the actual sales and the orange represents the, the prediction, that means that it didn't do a bad job here in this area, in predicting this area. It didn't do a bad job. It's actually very, very close with some steepness, but still, um, that's, that's very, very close. The prediction and um, the actual sales are really tight here you can see from the month between august and september so this is from september till july and in my opinion it's very very close from 2017 till 2018 that's the year that we've chosen um it's very close all right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video till then stay safe and be well Bex out <laughs>